Hi everyone, Maria here. This is week basics, making of the wefts. These are most of the things that I use in creation of the wefts. Again, the glues that I use aren't water resistant, so the finished wig shouldn't be submerged in water. Due to the nature of the completed art pieces, I don't think this is a problem if the hair has been handled with care. And keep in mind the color might start fading if washed too often. I prefer using natural fibers like alpaca and I buy them from friendly farms. They're soft and I find them easier to handle. Keep in mind such fibers won't hold styles like curls forever. And even if you use a fixative, they might loosen up a little. I prefer getting them in white because I love creating the color that I need for a project. It gives me much more freedom. And it is better to use gloves if you're prone to allergic reactions to the dyes. This time it is very important that the brush that will be used for gluing is flat, because it has to be applied precisely. Again synthetic for easy cleanup and because they last longer when used with glue. The shape of the brush that I use for dyeing doesn't really matter here. I just tend to use larger ones for faster application. Again synthetic for withstanding multiple uses and more importantly they are not so prone to staining. Sharp scissors to be able to make a clean cut. This is important because if they're not they will mess up the wefts. I am using this pet brush, it has bristles on the side and I personally find it more comfortable to use. It is easier to brush out tangled hair with less breakage and hair loss. Of course this mainly applies for natural fibers. I use plastic sheets to glue the wefts. I cut them in size just to fit the part where the glue is. And this way I have more. In other words, it is important to use a surface that the glue won't adhere to. I often use a hair straightener, but this is completely optional, because there are also beautiful natural curly fibers that don't need this step. Tying the wefts is also completely optional, because you can just get them ready, or use fibers like Zara, nylon hair, or brushing colored yarn. There are many choices of dyeing material. I don't use a specific type, but I rather look for colors that I like. For example, there are many dyes for fabric, synthetics, hair, wool, etc. I mix dyes only from the same brands. Same as paints, I never cross mix them because the composition of two different ones might go very wrong. And even when mixing the same brands, it is still very important to test on a small strand. This counts for any type of dye. As for working with liquid dyes, I like to fill them in pipette bottles, to be able to use just a few drips that I need. For example, it is handier when I want to make pastel colors. I dye the hair on aluminum foil and I cut it the size that I need. Keep in mind, some dyes shouldn't be covered. I just follow the instructions. Before I dye the hair, I like to trim the side where it will be glued. This is just my preference. You can also trim them right before gluing. Be generous with the material when creating drastic color changes. 
This is to make sure there aren't any spots where there wasn't enough dye. Sometimes it can be that I have to dye the hair a second and even a third time, just because of the color that I want to achieve. But no matter the color, always keep in mind to wash it out well, so when the wig is done, it won't stain. And never put on wet hair, even if it's slightly damp. Some tones require a lot of washing before they stop tinting the water. And here is the strand washed out of the dye. To avoid any hair loss, I brush it out very gently, so that I don't accidentally pull out hair. This fiber isn't naturally curly, so I prefer to use a flat iron. Use one of the plastic sheets and carefully place the hair strand on top. At the very top I draw a glue line. It doesn't have to be perfect just to cover a little bit the top because this will always make the strand a bit shorter and I like to minimize that. And I spread the glue with a flat brush. I always try to imagine where I will cut it and I paint it as best as I can in a straight line. After 24 hours it has dried clear. And I peel it off carefully because it can tear at the base where the strand is glued. I prefer to prepare all of the wefts by just only cutting out the excess. And when I am about to glue them, I cut out the rest. To be honest, you don't really need to cut them so thin as I do, because when you layer them, they still won't be that visible. I just got used to making them this way. I hope that this will help and if you have more questions feel free to ask me. Thanks for watching everyone and I hope to see you next time. Bye!